They work when the environment cooperates, and they degrade when it doesn't. Rain, fog, dust, smoke, humidity, haze, heat shimmer, all of that interferes with beam coherence and energy delivery. And that's not an Israeli problem or an Iranian problem or a political problem, it's basic physics. High energy lasers have been studied, tested and reported on extensively by militaries that are not interested in marketing copy, and the conclusion is consistent. Weather and atmosphere matter a lot. Israel sits between the coast and the desert, the river to the sea, if you like, in a region that routinely experiences humidity, dust, smoke from ongoing combat, thermal distortion. And that means Iron Beam's already limited effective range shrinks further in exactly the conditions you would expect during an actual conflict. The attacker does not have to guess when the system is weakest, they simply wait. They choose the timing. Missile interceptors don't care about fog, but lasers do. And that single fact alone prevents Iron Beam from ever being a replacement system. Because a defence layer that cannot be relied on in bad conditions cannot be the layer you build your security around, can it? Quantity makes the problem worse. A laser engages one target at a time. It has to dwell on that target for several seconds to burn through it. It then has to cool. That means saturation attacks, the thing Israel already faces, are not neutralised by Iron Beam either. They're weaponised against it. 30 drones arriving together, for example, do not get erased by science fiction beams slicing the sky, 